All right, Ricky. Yeah. Ricky, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? I'm, I'm originally from Philly, Philadelphia, on the mm -hmm. south side. And tell me about your family growing up. You had both mom and dad? Yeah, well, my father, I never knew him, but my mother, she, she, she tried to raise me, but she, she was involved in a lot of, a lot of heroin use, and she had a lot of different boyfriends. Uh, she had a boyfriend named Paul when I was when I was six years old, up until I was eight and a half, that he 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 would molest me, and and um. He always would threaten me and told him if I tell that he he would beat me. So I was always scared to tell and then we carried on until I was like fourteen and I ran away. I ran away and I ended up a little bit in New York and uh Chicago, but I had I had a grandmother that lived in L Los Angeles, and so I came to Los Angeles, and I started using crack cocaine in 1983. And she found out, and she kicked me out, and I had no place to go. I was homeless, and I was still young in my early 20s, and and I I ended up on Skid Row. I didn't I didn't know anything about Skid Row and I was like alone but I fell in with the wrong crowd and I was manipulated into uh, uh, giving with basically just sucking dick for for hits and stuff like that. And I wasn't making no money at it, but I just wanted to smoke. And um and so so that became like a little, a little hustle for me, I guess. But I was just sitting around and I would wait, and I would do these things because you know I didn't have no, no way to make money or anything. And um, and are you gay or? Huh? Are you gay or straight? Well, I, I'm not, I'm not gay like, but like if, sometimes if. If if I want to smoke and then I'll just do what I have to do, but I'm I'm not like gay or say like I would go to a party and and meet guys or anything like that. It's just that I don't know else how how else to get your drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not I'm not like gay like that, but I do have gay friends. And, you know, if I need money or something like that, I just, I don't know, I party. So, um, I've been to prison a few times for, for like, uh, you know, uh, possession and stuff like that. And, and you know, uh, I'm from back east and stuff like that, and the guys out here they really don't like these the dudes from back east. I I was raped in the county jail. I was raped in the county jail a few times, and you know it's not, it's been a horrible experience. Um, I was in and out of rehabs and stuff like that, but. I really, I really wasn't going to rehab like for help or anything. I was actually was going to take a rest, a break from the streets, and I gave my little weight back or whatever, and I just go right back out there and, and just smoke and, and and do whatever I have to do to get to get the get, get crack. So. I'm I'm in my fifties now. I, I try not to do the things that I was doing when I was young, but sometimes I have no options. You know, I don't I don't run out there and want to hurt nobody or anything like that. 
but it's just it's just the way things go sometimes for me. The other night, I was I was walking down the street, and I seen a bag on the street, and I picked it up, and it had a whole bunch of rocks in it, and I didn't think anybody seen me or whatever, but the guy seen me, and he said I stole his stuff, and I wanted to give it back to him. But I wasn't trying to steal, but I didn't know it was his stash. And what, like, what was in the bag? A bunch of rocks. It was probably like 40 or 50 rocks. Of crack cocaine? Of crack, yeah. And they beat me up, and they, they beat me up pretty bad this time. And I got the bruises on my face and stuff. And the thing was, when they was kicking my ass, I seen a couple rocks fall on the ground, and I couldn't think of nothing else but to pick them up while I was getting my ass kicked. And and I I I I I handled it the best I could. And I, when I went when I went to, to to go smoking, I I didn't have my pipe. And this this this, this guy he had a pipe. And I didn't know that he he was a rapist. And he took me in his alley and he tried to rape me and I was already beat up. But I just wanted to smoke. And he and he beat me up a little bit. But I wouldn't I, I he didn't rape me. He didn't get he didn't get it not this time. So I was pretty happy for that. But I'm I'm just trying to make it and keep on going. And do the best I can. Um, You've been living this life for how, how long? I've, I've since, been, since you were it, a young it, teen, right? Since I was a young teen, I've been in I've been in this life, and now it's getting bad. It was getting bad. I have a lot of some friends that I do know. Uh, I've been knowing them Skid Row for for quite some time. They um. They're dying. They're dying because of fentanyl smoke. Yeah, fentanyl looks like crack. Right? Yeah, it looks like crack. And sometimes, like, if the people, if the, some people don't like you or, or, or anything like that, or you may owe them some money or something, then that seems like the kind of the easiest way to commit a murder was, was just to give a guy fentanyl. And people are dying and, and, and I had got a hold of some fentanyl, and and it it almost killed me. But I I had a friend that had Narcan, and they brought me back, and I refused the ambulance. But I didn't feel too good, so I try to be cautious about who I buy or smoke with now, because of the fentanyl thing. It's like the number one killer out here. Have you been married? I, no, uh, I haven't been married with uh, one guy that he paid me $100 to get my blow job. And I did it, but he made a, a proposition because he, he wanted me, he wanted me to marry this, this guy but he was from Mexico, and they approved in California same-sex marriage. And I try not, I try not to be gay, but it seems like that is always coming, come in some way around in my life. And and, and you know, for money, I, sometimes I just can't resist. So I, I indulge in, in, in the activities. But he was going. He wanted to pay me to marry a Mexican guy, just so he could stay here in the United States. But that's the closest to marriage I ever been. But I didn't do it. You know, two thousand dollars sounded good to me, but I didn't do it. 
So I've, I've, I've been single most of my life because of the drugs and other things I did. I kind of, uh, sometimes I don't feel ashamed and I'm, I smoke cocaine, just to numb the memories and the pain. And it's a struggle. I'm still homeless. And I'm, I'm scared because of the COVID-19. Mm-hmm. Do you, you feel like crack has kind of derailed your life? I wish I wish I wouldn't have never took the first hit. And I don't know if I could ever just stop on my own. I would doubt it. I mean, yeah, crack has took 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 over my life, and that's all I that's all I think about. I I, I have no job and I have no savings, or even no credit. Good credit, I got real bad credit or anything. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest of my life except with just smoke, crack. Where, where do you where do you stay now? I stay on, 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 on the street called uh, Ceres. Yeah, a couple of blocks up. Are you in a tent? Yeah. You've been living in a tent for how long? I've been living in a tent since 1989. Uh, I guess you can say off and on because I have done a few prison stints. Mm. Do you have any kids? No, not that I know of. I, I really, I really, I have sex with women anyway. Uh, so, yeah. So, Are your is your mom still alive? Well, my mom, my mother died of AIDS virus in 1995, and I don't know who my dad is. Yeah, and so uh, I do have a brother, and sometimes whenever I have a phone, I do call him. You know, uh, he's about the only one that I can communicate with. And everybody else, I guess I kind of shut them out because of my lifestyle. What, what emotions do you go through? Do you, do you get any emotions that come up from your... Some, sometimes I want to commit suicide. Well, to be honest, I had, I had smoked some fentanyl in an attempt to kill myself. And it almost worked, but someone gave me some Narcan <laughs> and brought me back and I told them that like, that wasn't part of the plan. But it was kind of scary, you know? And, uh, yeah, but yeah, I contemplate suicide because my life's just all messed up. What would you say is the most important thing you've learned in your life? The most important thing I've learned in my life is I guess never get yourself in something that you can't get yourself out of. Cause I have found myself in situations behind my addiction to crack that it was no way out of it unless it was a body bag. So I just roll with the punches. So yeah, I learned that lesson that I would, you know, to never get myself in something that I can't get out of. All right, Ricky, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. I wish you lots of luck out here. All right. Thank you, man.